Clive Duchesne, this is Bangor City Forest. Instead of a bird's eye view today, how about a bird's eye ear? See, this time of year, all the migrants have returned and they're all singing because they're establishing territories and trying to attract a mate. So because they're singing, this couldn't be a better time than to learn some of what you're hearing. So there are some tricks to learning all of these. And one of the ways to do it is to break them all down. See, birds aren't making all the same noise. They're warbling or whistling or chirping or trilling. Trilling. See, there's a group with only four birds that trill. Trill. It's supposed to be a quavering alternation between two very similar notes or a police whistle. So, four birds that trill. Pine warbler, chipping sparrow, dark-eyed junco, and swap sparrow. If you hear a trill, it's probably one of those four. See, here's my suggestion. Trillers are everywhere. There's probably one in your backyard or very close to you. Go out, find it, watch it, listen to a trill, and learn that one bird. See, once you know one bird, you can get the other three. For instance, my default bird is a pine warbler. They nest in the pine trees above my house. I get to hear this a lot. It's a sweet trill, and by that I mean it doesn't sound raspy in any way, it's not rattly. It's very clear, beautiful notes. Well, one thing about pine warblers, they tend to move and sing, and they're in the tops of pine trees, so they can be hard to see. It's a yellow bird with white wing bars uh, that tends to be up exclusively in pine trees. So, once I've got the pine warbler, the nice sweet trill, I can get the chipping sparrow, because that trill is a little more metallic. It's a little longer trill, and it sounds, well, a little bit like an insect trilling. Notice how it's just sort of a thinner trill. The other thing about chipping sparrows, they tend to be out in the open, on the open edges of fields and woods. They're not going to be in the woods. They're not going to be way out in the open part of the field. They'll be right along the edges. They like to sing fairly low on bare branches. So when they're singing, they stay in one place and you can get to watch them. All right, take your default bird, your chipping sparrow or your pine warbler, and compare it to the dark-eyed junco. Dark-eyed juncos have sort of a two-tone quality to the trill. It's almost like an old-fashioned ringing telephone. You see how this is between two distinct notes as opposed to the other trills? More like an old-fashioned ringing telephone. Dark-eyed juncos, when they're singing, like to be at the top of trees and open bare branches. And they'll sit there and do that for a while. So you usually can pick them out and watch them sing. They're not that hard to watch. Lastly, swamp sparrows. These guys are surprisingly easy because they're only going to be down in wet, low areas. And this is a bird that feeds low, lives low, nests low. You're almost never going to see it above your head height and it's going to be down in a wet area, so cattails, reeds, tops of bushes and wet spots, swamps, marshes, that's where they're going to be, that's only where they're going to be. Swamp sparrow, it's a slow liquid trill, and by that I mean it's really sweet individual notes. So you don't have to learn all the bird singing you made all at once. There are four trillers. Learn the one making most of the noise near you. Once you've got that one, you can get the other three.